In Guilds of Ravnica, there was a card released called 10th District Guard that seems quite unassuming. It's a common, and the card's ability is bad even for limited, but there is a notable emphasis on her flavor text. She says simply, the 10th has always been my home. This city is constantly embroiled in one crisis or another, but I'm determined to protect my peace. This calm and earnest patriotism gets rewarded in the next set, Ravnica Allegiance, where you see her become the 10th district veteran. In this card's flavor text, you see her talking further about her reasons for fighting. I keep reminding myself we do this because others can't, because we love this city. If we don't save it, no one will. Later that year, when War for the Spark was released, they released the next chapter in her story in Battlefield Promotion. The flavor text shows that she's defended her home against the zombie horde. Welcome to the Legion. You've saved a district, now let's go save the world. The last time that we see her is in 10th District Legionnaire, personally fighting off the Eternalized Army. The person speaking in her flavor text is known to be Tajik, Blade of the Legion, the head of the Boros Guild on Ravnica. The 10th is under heavy attack, but is being handled. I sent Maleva. And that's the first time that we hear her name. Watching a story of a humble guard who worked her way to being trusted implicitly by the head of the Boros Legion is an inspiring story that was so tastefully and subtly done that it wouldn't be noticed if you weren't looking for it. Stories like these give the world its depth, and it's one of the reasons I love Magic the Gathering in the first place. Merge, like, comment, subscribe. Hello, welcome back to Back to Basics, episode number 29, a show where I take EDH commanders and try to find the perfect basic lands to fit them. I love seeing someone sit down with some beautiful basic lands, but something I love even more is seeing how well those lands match their commanders. One quick note before we begin. I like to give the artists credit for their artworks, but I may not pronounce their names perfectly. I'll try my best, but please forgive me and correct me if that ever happens. First on the list, we've got Strovald, Frost Giant Jarl from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms Commander decks. The thing that I love about this commander is how cold and hazy everything feels. It feels like you don't have a very good view of Strovald despite him being in the center of the frame, like you were fleeing from him and only just managed to catch a glimpse of him before being attacked. But a pretty strong visual concept alongside that would be the deep dark elements overshadowed by the bright and cold color palette. With all of these things in mind, I actually had an easier time finding basics that matched him than I thought that I would. Take a look at this pairing from the 2020 promo packs, starting with this plains illustrated by Daniel Ljunggren, this island illustrated by Piotr Dura, and this beautiful forest illustrated by Elena Danner. The thing that I liked about these was that while they didn't match color-wise, they matched in tone and in medium, really feeling like you are looking through haze to view the imagery, and also having strong contrast between light and dark. A second idea was to go to snow-covered basics to help emphasize the tundra background of Strobel. Take a look at this snow-covered plains from the Eldraine Wonderland Secret Lair, this snow-covered island from the same set, and this snow-covered forest from the same set as well, all of them illustrated by Elena Danner. I loved this pairing for many reasons, but the primary one is that most of the snow-covered basics that have been created in the past don't capture that hazy color styling like these ones do, which made it all match up quite perfectly. But for some old bordered options, Take a look at this plains illustrated by Jesper Meifers from 2nd edition, this forest illustrated by David O'Connor from 5th edition, and this island from Ice Age illustrated by Anson Maddox. I loved this pairing, with the only problem being that there was no white bordered island with this artwork. I feel like these communicate the snowy atmosphere of Strovald without being snow covered basics explicitly. And along the same line of thinking, I was able to find this beautiful forest from 6th edition, illustrated by John Avon this island, illustrated by Rob Alexander from 7th edition, and this perfectly gray and clouded plains from Onslaught, illustrated by Rob Alexander as well. This pairing was probably my favorite of the group because of how each of the lands uniquely feels so gray in comparison to many of the colorful and high saturation images we get in basic lands today. And using old bordered cards for newer commanders is a tasteful and fun way to harken back to MTG history. Second up, we've got Gishath, Sun's Avatar from Ixalan. The artwork for Gishath is very telling. The bright plumes of red and green on Gishath himself are elegantly complemented by the sun in the background, giving a glare to help highlight him. And looking at all the basic lands that match with his home plane, 
I found that there wasn't much on Ixalan proper that matched particularly well with him. That, coupled with the dinosaur aesthetics, really helps narrow it down. Take a look at this forest from Jumpstart, illustrated by Elena Danner, that felt quite obligatory, showcasing dinosaurs. This plains, illustrated by Tom Wanderstrand from Mirage, featuring some prey animals that Gisheth might hunt, and then pairing it with this mountain from Shadowmoor, which is the closest that I could come thematically to the shape of Gisheth's face. I liked this pairing for its obviousness. With such a heavy dinosaur theme present, it will be easy to see what you were doing when you sat down to play this series of lands in a commander game. For a second pairing, I felt like the color shard that Gishath represents is also very telling. Take a look at this plains depicting the Naya shard from Shards of Alara, this mountain from the same set, and this forest all illustrated by Zoltan Boros and Gabor Siksai. I loved this pairing because of its representation. The Naya shard on Alara is all about the largest and most powerful creatures, and the brightness and sun-streaked nature of the artwork matches Gishath perfectly, in my opinion. However, I wanted to try to search across history for some additional basics that match the color styling of Gishath. Take a look at this forest from Dominaria, illustrated by Dimitar Marinsky, this beautiful mountain illustrated by Florian de Jessencourt from the Game Night promos, and this plains from the 2020 promo packs illustrated by Daniel Lundgren. I loved how the artwork blends together to make a seamless transition of yellows to greens on each of the artworks. And personally, that plains is one of my favorite illustrations of all time. But finally, I would be remiss to not include probably the best thematic choice yet, but it will run you a pretty penny. Take a look at this Godzilla-themed plains illustrated by Lars Grant West, this mountain illustrated by Jegor Shrychowski, and this forest illustrated by Jen Ravenna that all came from the Godzilla-themed secret lair. These are far from budget, but their impact is unique for a deck like these. For a dinosaur-themed tribal deck based around summoning additional dinosaurs, it only seems fair to include Godzilla among that lineup of terrible lizards. Third on the list, we've got Giada, Font of Hope, from Streets of New Capenna. This artwork is interesting, for its two seemingly conflicting dynamics. The angelic themes she displays run contrast to the off-putting angle, dark streets, and concerned face that she wears, which, upon closer inspection, is a perfect juxtaposition in a plane where angels are hunted and harvested for their magic. But ultimately, it made it quite difficult to find matching basics, so I had to go more thematic than visual in my choices. Take a look at this panoramic plains illustrated by Rob Alexander from Urza Saga that depicts Sarah's realm, a haven for angels during its heyday. While it doesn't match color-wise, it matches both flavor-wise and gameplay-wise as well, because Giada is the de facto angel commander you want to be running in most, if not all, angel-themed commander decks. Also, if you wanted to have modern borders instead of the old borders, you can find that same artwork as well in the Dual Decks Anthology Divine vs. Demonic, which I think was awesome. For a second pairing, take a look at this plains illustrated by John Avon from Commander 2018, which, while it doesn't match color-wise, feels like the type of positivity you would like to see in an angel-themed commander deck. Or you could try to match the themes of city life more closely with this plains from Ravnica, illustrated by Stepan Martinier which I think is rarely used, despite being so striking. Or, you could take a look at this plains illustrated by Sung Choi from Jumpstart, that has divine energy crackling through the ground, which could signify Halo, the magical substance derived from angels on New Capenna. Or finally, you could try this plains from the Magic Fest promos, illustrated by Sam Burley, to also try to capture the positive feeling. Ultimately, this one was difficult to find while matching basics for, because of all the unique styling decisions made in the artwork, but it was fun nonetheless to try to dream up a world that Giada could finally be happy in. For her alternate art, it wasn't much easier, but I was able to find this Streets and Nukapenna artwork to match color-wise pretty closely. Take a look at this plains from Streets and Nukapenna, illustrated by Thomas Stoop, that I think does an excellent job of communicating the golds and blues present in her artwork, as well as matching lore-wise as well. Fourth in line in today's video, we have Ayula, Queen Among Bears. Despite being mostly a joke commander for fun and casual bear tribal decks, Ayula has some genuinely regal artwork. The aspects of her artwork were easy to pinpoint as a result. The glowing light radiating from her crown and the blue-tinged atmospheric effects and downed trees all helped me to find forests 
that I think matched up really well. Take a look at this forest from the Premier Shop promos, illustrated by Rob Alexander, that do all of these things excellently, even though they are higher budget. But if you wanted to continue this idea, try out this full art forest from Zendikar Rising, illustrated by Tianhua X, that has the gnarled trees, sunscape, and blue tones to match up super well. Or you could try this forest from Double Masters, that focuses more on the yellow tones of Ayula rather than her background. But finally, I think the one that I like best is this forest from Avacyn Restored, illustrated by Yaitan Zana, because of the deer in the foreground signifying prey for Ayula and her bears to catch. Ultimately, the ideas all work decently well because of Ayula's simplicity of card style, and the thematic elements line up easily when you look for them. But finally, we've got quite an interesting commander to round out today's video. It's Experiment Kraj from Dissension. A relatively rare commander in today's day and age, this artwork is extraordinarily contrasted. The bright purple elements in his knotted form give off a sense of the old style of Magic the Gathering artworks that used heavier line work and more deep contrast to showcase its figures. However, all of these things made it very difficult for me to come up with a basic land pairing that matched every aspect of his color scheme and styling. But I got as close as I could with these five pairings from across Magic the Gathering history. Take a look at this island from Invasion, illustrated by Therese Nielsen, that does an extraordinary job of matching the strong line work, and pairing it with this forest, illustrated by John Mason from Onslaught, that I think looks perfect in my opinion. The only flaw with this pairing is that it fails to capture the bright violet hues that I think are a focus in this artwork, but in all other ways, I really like it. Another pairing that does a similar feeling with more modern borders would be this island illustrated by Nils Hom from Throne of Eldraine, and coupling it with this forest from Jumpstart illustrated by Lena Danner. I feel like this pairing captures the complex elements of this artwork abstractly, especially the forest, which does a great job of emphasizing that contrast that we were talking about earlier. However, I did want to try to find that violet tone, so take a look at this forest from Innistrad that I think comes quite close, and coupling it with this island from M15, illustrated by Florian de Jessencourt. This pairing was fun, because the colors of purple matched so well between the basic lands, and while they aren't as neon as the purple in Experiment Kraj, the effort becomes evident when it's lined up together. With the final two pairings in this video, I was eager to try to find a happy medium between all of these complex elements and violent tones into one pairing, and I found that on the plain of Mirrodin. Take a look at this island from Mirrodin Besieged, illustrated by Young Park, that shows the carapace of a dead Phyrexian, and this forest, illustrated by Mark Tedden, that matches surprisingly well, despite being cosmically different planes of existence in the multiverse. I enjoyed this pairing more for the color matching than the lore. However, I was able to find another pairing that matched similarly as well, taking inspiration from the same sources. So, if you'd indulge me, Take a look at this forest from Mirrodin, illustrated by Martina Pulcherova, that has that powerful green color and nettled appearance as well as this island, illustrated by John Avon from the Magic Premier Shop promos, that I think matched this whole scene very well. I like this pairing, for how strange and unforest-like the forest is, and how odd and warped the island is. From an out-of-context perspective, these abstracted, misshapen forms all blend together and match quite well. But there you have it. Five more commanders, sorted for which basic lands I think match them best. But I want to see what you think. Tell me which commanders you'd like me to try and pick up basic lands for. Comment below and let me know. And have a great day.